Let up in the pressure of protest this week, maybe because of signs the needle is moving across the country and here in South Florida, police departments and lawmakers are responding to calls for reform from implicit bias to use of excessive force. This week, Congress showed that it hears the demands for change. A bill was introduced that would profoundly reform the way policing takes place in America. And we start right there for perspective from South Florida's only Republican member of Congress, Mario diaz Balart, joining us now from Skype. Good morning. How Congre are you? Congressman, good morning. Great to have you on. Uh, Congressman diaz Balart. we clearly, you, us, we all are seeing something extraordinary over the last three weeks. We have seen thousands of people in South Florida, hundreds of thousands across the country, marching mostly peacefully, demanding change and into systemic racism and into brutality by police against people. As a veteran member of Congress, what do you say to those people and what can you do to answer their demands? Well, first place, a couple of things. Thanks for having me on. There's a big difference between those who are demonstrating peacefully and those who have committed acts of violence, of looting. That is totally unaccepted, uh, unacceptable and must be not only condemned, but I think the full force of the law has to come on, on those who have uh, committed acts of violence or looting. Now, obviously, uh, there is frustration out there, and, and one has to be very sensitive to that. There is no excuse uh, to what happened uh, to Mr. Floyd. Uh, that was condemned from top to bottom as it needed to be. The system seems to be working. The, the culprit uh, now has been indicted for murder, and those who didn't help have also been indicted. So the question is, is our country systematically racist? Is our country evil? And I would argue it is not. Racists exist. But as far as racism as a, as a policy by uh, whether it's state, local, or, or federal government in the United States, that's not accurate. However, we must always look at ways to fight racism uh, wherever and however we can. And I'm hoping that we can take some steps to, again, make sure that people understand that we're going to do that. Congressman, um, you know, I think what protesters have been saying is not pinpointing a person who is racist, but generally talking about how this country is founded on racist principles and systemic structures of racism. And, and I bring that up because as we come on the air this morning, once again, we we're hearing this news in, in Atlanta, one police officer who is now fired, another is on administrative leave. Uh, we don't know a lot of the details of what happened, how this man died at a, for, in a police shooting. Uh, Wendy's restaurant is burning, but again, the headline on all of this is another black man in America is shot and killed by a white police officer. Uh, in context of that, can you give us your perspective on even as the nation is, is convulsing, it happened again. Well, Glenn, I would, I, I would disagree with the premise, however. This country was not founded on racism. It was founded on religious freedom. Uh, look at the preamble of, of, of our Constitution. Now, I would argue and I would say that it took too long to get to actually what the founders had envisioned. Uh, but, we're, but we've made amazing strides. There's no country that has done more particularly in, in recent decades in the United States, to fight racism. Uh, and so I would just argue that that's just not accurate. And that's a revisionist uh, look at history, which is not accurate. This country is the greatest country today that uh, the world has ever seen. And so I, I, don't, I don't buy that, and I don't accept that mm -hmm. premise respectfully, obviously. Now, are there instance, uh, instances of racism? Absolutely, and that has to be fought, uh, and we have to do everything possible. And we also have to make sure that people feel comfortable with the police, but we also have to make sure that our police officers are protected, can do their job. Because, you know, this whole, uh, as you, as the show started, you, you talked about this effort to defund the police departments around the country. Oh, yeah, because we're going to call 9-11 and what, the local florist is going to come and save us uh, when we're, you know, being attacked or when our family is being uh, threatened. Look, we have to make sure that we do things respectfully, reasonably, uh, the premise that this country is racist, I do not accept. The premise that there are racists, like there are corrupt people, is absolutely the case. And that's why we have to fight against those instances of racism. Yeah. One of the things we need, we need to do is make sure that nationally we know if there's a bad cop uh, so that that bad cop can't go from one department or one state to another, be reinstated, and, the, and people don't know that he's a problematic cop.
Yeah. But also, one well, last Congressman, thing. if I if I could, let me interrupt to say uh, I know that you're quite aware that in Congress this week a bill was introduced called the Justice and Policing Act of 2020, and one of the provisions in that act would create a national registry so that a cop who was fired for misconduct from one department could not then go to another state or another police department. Clearly, that's something. What about that act? Can you support that bill? There are some really good things in that act, but unfortunately, in the uh, it shouldn't surprise us. It's it's the M.O. of Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She always constantly overreaches. Uh, I'm hoping and I'm sure that there will be a way to negotiate, get some of the excessive or negative parts out of that act, uh, to have a bipartisan bill, bicameral bill that can become law, that will uh, have transparency, that will make sure that we do everything possible to make sure that those bad apples are not able to continue to participate. There also has to be, by the way, accountability to, I think, government like the one in Minneapolis. Uh, and I've heard very little about about what accountability is there going to be to, you know, as far as the mayor, the police chief, the council in Minneapolis, where this took place. And it seems, if this is accurate, that that police officer who, who murdered somebody uh, had uh, some, some issues in the past and yet was still there. So there has to be accountability, transparency, making sure that we have much higher standards. Uh, there, there are things that we can agree to, but obviously, again, it shouldn't surprise us that that Speaker Nancy Pelosi always goes a little bit farther than uh, than the country wants to go, or that would be yeah. positive. But that's something that I'm sure we'll be able to negotiate out. Congressman, I want to go back to something you were talking about, the, the idea of defunding the police. To your point, I think a lot of people blanched when they first heard that, like abolish the police force to, to mainstream America is is a you know an intense idea but but what we've learned is that defunding the police means something a bit different in that taking money away from the police department to put it toward things like mental health and education and front end social services the point being that a the police wouldn't have to answer a crisis call like they do now someone like a social worker might or or even funding the front end programs that would reduce crime and maybe not need the kind of policing we have now. Is, is that something that you might be able to get behind? Glenna, again, that subtlety that you just mentioned is what some individuals are saying, but that's not what the movement was asking for. So again, that, that subtlety is now the, the how some politicians are trying to change the narrative, but you saw absolutely very aggressively people saying eliminate police departments, and that's what some folks have been asking for, which is highly irresponsible. Now. I think, by the way, that there may be a case that we need to further fund police departments to increase their level of training to make sure that they have the best standards. So the concept of taking money out of police departments uh, not only could put communities in jeopardy, it could put police officers in jeopardy. Uh, and so I, th I don't think that's reasonable. And, and so the subtlety of trying to now, not you, but some of the folks out there are saying, well, no, no, uh, eliminating police departments doesn't mean eliminating police departments. It means uh, taking out their money and sending it elsewhere. Look, the bottom line is that there's an effort out in the country to eliminate police departments, to uh, totally uh, get rid of them, to defund police departments, including from members in the United States House of Representatives. That is irresponsible. We may need to shift funding. Uh, local municipalities may need to shift funding. Here in Miami-Dade County, we have an amazing police director. Uh, that's the person that I want to go to to find out what the needs are of the police department, to make sure they have the best people, the best training, that they're sensitive, by the way, and trained to deal with people with mental health issues, uh, which is very delicate and potentially dangerous for the patient and the police officer. So there's a lot that can be done, but this call to eliminate or defund uh, police uh, departments around the country, let's not minimize what it is. This, you know, I think you're talking about the subtleties of what some people are talking about. That's not what the proposals have been. That's not what some who are in Congress are advocating for. And that would be highly destructive, yeah. totally unacceptable. And again, I guess we're supposed to call our local florist, uh, our dry cleaner, when somebody's breaking into our house. Congressman, Look, I support law enforcement. I support our police officers. They're it. heroes, <laughs> and even though some have made mistakes. Can we, uh, we're, it's, it's so great to really delve into the meaning of these things. Can we hold on for a, a little bit? We're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back and pick this conversation up. Stay tuned. On this Sunday on This Week in South Florida, we're speaking with Congressman 
Mario diaz Ballard represents the 25th Congressional District, Southwest Miami-Dade, all over the Everglades, almost over to Naples. Congressman, we're so glad you're with us. Uh, the president has not gone on nationwide television from the Oval Office since the murder on Memorial Day of George Floyd, has not really spoken to the American people, called for unity, uh, called for calm. Uh, is that a mistake on his part? I, I think it's important to hear from uh, the president uh, in uh, difficult moments. The country is going through difficult moments. I hope he does uh, do that. And, I, you know, one of the things that I'd like to emphasize is while this is going on, we should never forget the pain that the Floyd family is enduring right now, just like uh, the Underwood family or the Dorn family. Uh, these are folks who have lost loved ones, and we should never forget that. And, again, yes, I'd like to hear from him. Uh, but And, again, we should never forget that this is not just – Theory, these are people who have lost their lives. Yeah, uh, if I may, uh, tell us, explain, uh, who are the Underwood families and the Dorn families? How do they figure into this? Yeah, uh, Patrick Underwood uh, was a federal contractor who was murdered uh, by a mob uh, of uh, criminals uh, during this episode at the beginning of the, you know, not that, that remember, there's a difference between, as I mentioned, demonstrators and, and, and criminal activity. Um, <clears throat> you know, an individual 50-plus years old, African-American gentleman uh, who was murdered. Um, and Mr. Dorn was a retired police officer, also an oh. African-American yes. individual who was murdered by <clears throat> by folks trying to loot, I believe, a, I don't know, a shop. <clears throat> and so th those are the folks that we have to always remember. Uh, these are real people. While this thing can always get political, I'm hoping that we stay united. This is an amazing country, and it's amazing what we can do if we stay united. And, and remember uh, what we're dealing with. These are folks who have lost their lives. Uh, some by, again, one by a police officer uh, who, again, is under indictment for murder. The others, as far as I know, uh, their murderers have not been uh, indicted yet. I hope they will. Yeah, I, I'm sure if somebody from Black Lives Matter were sitting on this desk or were part of the conversation, they might say something like, yes, and let's remember Emma Till, 14-year-old black youth, you Correct. know, who was uh, strung up and lynched in 1955. Uh, it's part of a long history of violence against black people in this country. Yeah, and, and, and that's absolutely the case, Michael. But I think uh, not uh, recognizing the strides that have been made from then to now, uh, not only, by the way, individually, uh, how racism is now despised and how it has been institutionalized, anti-racism has been institutionalized in practice and in law, both on the federal, state, uh, on the three of them, federal, state, and local uh, 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 level, and I think that's crucial and important. Uh, the world was different 100 years ago. Uh, this country is different. Uh, you know, we had the Civil Rights Movement. We had the Voting Rights Act. Uh, we've had a lot of strides. We've had we had an American uh, president elected and reelected who's an African American. I've yet to see that kind of uh, uh, positive things taking place, in, including uh, wonderful democracies in Europe. And so, again, while we have a long way to go, we do, and it took too long. This country has done an amazing job and will continue, as long as we do it together, uh, making it better for everyone, whether you're African-American, Hispanic-American, woman, yeah. Jew, whatever it is. We have to make sure that discrimination is just not available for those who want to do it. Uh, so the institutional part of it is done, but we have to continue to work on it day in, day out. Congressman, so the president is about to, we hear, come up with an executive order on police misconduct reform. What, what do you know about that? What might that look like? Well, it's really interesting. This is the, the administration that worked with Congress uh, uh, to get reform of the, of the judicial system, something that had been talked about for decades. Uh, so I'm hopeful that uh, he will have a proposal, again, that we can coalesce around. That doesn't mean that we're going to agree to all of it. Um, but so, so Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker, has a proposal. The President uh, will have a proposal. I know that the, the Senate will have a separate proposal. That's the way the system is supposed to work. And then we negotiate, uh, get rid of the parts that are more questionable, and hopefully have a consensus or close to a consensus document, legislation, to protect people while we protect law enforcement, while we help those heroes uh, do the job that we ask them to do every single day. And again, always fighting discrimination to make sure that this country, the greatest country ever, uh, gets even better. Yeah. Congressman, in just 10 seconds, August, uh, late August, Jacksonville, you will be a delegate to the Republican convention. Are you going to go? Are you going to wear a face mask? 
Uh, Michael, as you know, uh, my wife, who you know, Tia, is super healthy, yes. but she uh, is at very high risk. So mm -hmm. I'm very, very careful to make sure I don't bring anything home. So we'll see. We'll see. But I'm excited that it's coming here to Florida. And, and you may be immune now that you've had COVID-19. That's that's something everyone's looking at, too. So who knows? It's a <laughs> yeah, good right thing not. you're healthy. Great to have you with us <laughs> again. Thank you, Thanks, Congressman. Congressman. Pleasure being with both come, of you. Thank come you so back much. anytime.